Today we are going to discuss ventricular fibrillation or VF as a cause of death after acute coronary occlusion. We have started discussing causes of death after acute coronary occlusion. We have discussed that some of the most important causes of death include uh, cardiogenic shock and uh, acute pulmonary edema and another important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion is ventricular fibrillation. Now first of all what is ventricular fibrillation? What is ventricular fibrillation? What is VF? Now to understand VF we must understand the normal impulse conduction pathway in the heart. Normally in an absolutely normal heart there is impulse generation in the S anode which gets conducted to the AV node and then through the Purkinje fibers S anode then AV node then through the Purkinje fibers it goes into the heart muscles it excites the heart muscles and the heart conducts uh, contracts and then after contraction of the heart the impulse die out the impulse dies out But what occurs in ventricular fibrillation is that there is a damage to the heart portion, uh, some portion of the heart. Now that damage could be due to any reason but here we are discussing the damage or the VF due to acute coronary occlusion. So we will discuss the damage in relation to, to the acute coronary occlusion. Now for example this is the coronary vessel and it has been occluded here. Now the blood flow to this portion of the heart has been stopped. And this area, this portion of the heart has been damaged. Now, what will happen, what will happen is that the impulse which normally is generated in the SA node, AV node, through the Purkinje fibers normally dies out. But this time, due to damage, some abnormalities occur which leads to a condition in which the impulse which gets generated from the SA node, it never die out. It will never And that impulse once starts due to some abnormalities, it's, it keeps on moving round and round and round. That is known as circus movement. Due to the circus movement of the impulse, some portions of the heart are activated at one time and some are activated at another time and there is no coordinated contraction of the heart muscles. This portion of the heart may contract at one time, this portion of the heart may contract at another time and some other portion of the heart may contract at another time. The heart may be like vibrating, it may be like vibrating but there will be no proper pumping of the blood and there will be literally no blood. If this condition, if this condition if the ventricular fibrillation is not treated on emergency basis, it can lead to death within few minutes. It can lead to death within few, within few minutes because there is no output. The impulse is generated. Small portions of the heart are contracted uncoordinatedly and there is literally no proper contraction of the heart. There is literally no pumping of the heart. There is literally no cardiac output. So it leads to death. And it leads to death very rapidly. Now, the ventricular fibrillation is one of those conditions in which there is no uh, much time, and the uh, the patient may even die with uh, even before reaching the hospital. Now, first of all, we answered the question that oh, what is uh, ventricular fibrillation? Now, how ventricular fibrillation occurs? How fib ventricular fibrillation occurs? Now. Ventricular fibrillation can occur due to a lot of conditions, but it uh, occurs normally due to occlusion of the uh, coronary vessels, which is basically ischemia. And it may also occur due to uh, shock, electric shock. If someone gets an electric shock, the patient may develop ventricular fibrillation and may die suddenly. And there are some other conditions which may lead to ischemia apart from acute coronary occlusion and they all may lead to ventricular fibrillation. Now, what are the conditions that lead to ventricular fibrillation that lead to ventricular fibrillation in acute coronary occlusion now the conditions the conditions which lead to ventricular fibrillation after acute coronary occlusion they include depletion of the potassium ions in the muscle cells that the, the cells in the muscles uh, which have been damaged there is depletion of potassium in these cells and there is increased potassium there is 
increase potassium in the extracellular fluid surrounding these muscles there is depletion in these muscle cells and there is increase in potassium in the extracellular fluid surrounding these muscle cells now the second thing is there is injury current or current of injury this portion of the heart this portion of the heart it remains uh, polarized it remains polarized and uh, th uh, this this remain this portion of the heart it remains negative and it continuously it continuously lead to formation of new impulses due to which there is circus movement the impulse keeps on moving round and round and round and the heart muscles get uh, activated again and again and again but there is no proper activation so there is no proper con uh, con contraction and no proper pumping of the blood then there is sympathetic reflexes these are some things which occurs which are which are basically the conditions which occur in the acute coronary occlusion now we will also discuss that how these conditions basically fulfill the criteria which are responsible for the ventricular fibrillation so one is the depletion of potassium in the cells and increase in potassium outside the extra in the extracellular cells then there is current of injury formation then there is sympathetic reflexes when there is no current cardiac output when there is uh, no pumping no cardiac output the sympathetic system gets activated in the heart cells the sa node the av node the muscles are get are activated with the help of sympathetic nerves and it also basically uh, leads to a condition in which ventricular fibrillation will occur now what are the conditions basically how it leads to ventricular fibrillation we are going to discuss that shortly and finally due to damage of this portion of the heart or some other portion of the heart the ventricles may be dilated now the dilated ventricles also fulfill a condition which leads to ventricular fibrillation so the four basic conditions which occur which lead to ventricular fibrillation in acute coronary occlusion are depletion of potassium in the cells and increase in potassium in the extracellular fluid surrounding the cells current of injury formation sympathetic reflexes and the dilated uh, dilated ventricles now how these conditions basically lead to how these conditions lead to ventricular for uh, fibrillation because these conditions uh, satisfy some uh, basic uh, some some conditions these conditions basically are criteria which fulfill some other criteria that are necessary for the ventricular fibrillation now suppose for example here we have the sa node over here normally we have this sa node and it leads to uh, an impulse formation the impulse will be formed here and it will go through the heart through the av node suppose for example here we have the av node and then it will go through the purkinje fibers through the heart for example these are the purkinje fibers and it will come again to this point so it will start from the sa node it will go, come to the av node the impulse and then finally from the av node it will come again to through the purkinje fibers and it will die out here it will the impulse will die out here now after dying the whole of the heart has been uh, excited and the heart is basically in the refractory period refractory period once a proper contraction of the heart muscles has occurred then for some time there is a refractory period now you see initially initially uh, no no part of the heart muscle was in a refractory period but then this portion has become refractory and after that this portion has become refractory and once the the impulse has reached again this point the whole of the heart is now refractory and in the refractory uh, time in the refractory period the im the second impulse cannot come and it cannot excite the heart and there cannot be uh, any and a proper contraction cannot occur in the refractory period so normally when one impulse is generated and it excites the whole of the heart there is a refractory period in which there can no can with in which an, an impulse cannot be conducted and contraction of the heart cannot occur but in ventricular fibrillation that 
refractory period is lost due to some factors. And what are the factors which basically leads to decrease or loss of that refractory period? Now, when the de de depletion of potassium ions occur or when there is increase in the extracellular potassium, it leads to decrease in the velocity of impulse. It leads to the decrease in the velocity of this impulse. Now, this impulse is moving so much slowly that by the time it reaches here again, by the time it reaches here again, some of the portion of the heart, this portion, for example, this portion of the heart, it has come out of the refractory period. It has come out of the refractory period. Now, this portion of the heart can be excited once again. So, one condition which basically is the depletion of potassium or increase in the potas extracellular potassium ion this basically fulfills one criteria which uh, is necessary for ventricular fibrillation to occur and that is decrease in the velocity of impulse the impulse which normally is generated here and it is traveling through a certain speed that speed is reduced that speed is basically reduced the speed decreases so when the speed decreases, it, it moves so much slowly that by the time it reaches this point, some of the portion of the heart, for example, this portion of the heart, it has come out of the refractory period. So when it has come out of the refractory period, it can be excited once again. So the heart has not come out of one contraction, one impulse, and it has been excited once again. So there is no proper impulse and no proper contraction. Now, Another condition is that there is injury current formation. This area, this is basically injured. This is basically injured due to the damage caused by decreased blood flow. So there is continuous current from formation. This, uh, there, this area remains negative and it con continuously leads to the current formation. So the this satisfies, uh, this basically uh, satisfies another uh, criteria which is basically short refractory period which is basically short refractory period and due to injury current or due to current of injury the refractory period the time for which the heart will not be excited it decreases that refractory period becomes shortened and it shortens because there is injury current and due to the injury current, the heart gets excited again and again. The, the impulse travels again and again. And this impulse now, it is basically forming the circus movement. So, one condition was basically decrease in the velocity of the impulse. The, Im the velocity with which the impulse was moving, it has been decreased. So, due to which the some portion of the heart uh, comes out of the uh, refractoriness and it can be excited again. Another condition is that due to damage of the acute coronary uh, occlusion, there is injury current formation and injury current formation basically shortens the refractory period. So the heart comes out of the refractory period very quickly and another portion uh, and it can be excited once again, which again leads to the circus movement, which is basically the impulse moving round and round and round and exciting the heart muscles again and again and again. And there is no proper contraction. Now, there is sympathetic reflexes activated in acute coronary occlusion because there is decreased functioning of the heart. There is decreased cardiac output. So it activates the sympathetic reflexes and due to activation of the sympathetic, sympathetic reflexes, there is formation of, uh, there is a release of some neurotransmitters like epinephrine, norepinephrine. Those epinephrine and norepinephrine also shortens the refractory period. They also shortens the refractory period because the sympathetic reflexes, they get, they get activated because the brain thinks that the heart is not pumping properly. So with the help of sympathetic nerves, the brain is basically trying to activate the heart more and more. So to the brain when it tries to activate the heart more and more, it leads to short refractory period once again. It leads to short refractory period once again. So the time for which this heart is refractory, in which there is no contraction or impulse cannot uh, uh, flow or travel, that time once again shortens. So 
Injury current can also lead to short refractive period and sympathetic reflexes through the release of neurotransmitters like epinephrine and norepinephrine also shortens the refractive period the period in which the period in which the heart can no, not uh, allow another impulse to travel through it so that refractive period decreases through sympathetic reflexes as well and it also leads to a condition which helps in the ventricular fibrillation or which leads to ventricular fibrillation finally there is dilated ventricle now the dilated ventricle it leads to long pathway now this is the normal pathway this is the normal pathway in which the impulse has started here and it has ended again here the impulse physically started here and it ended here here the impulse started this area become refractory then after some time this whole this area become refractory and finally the whole of the heart became refractory but when this impulse or uh, this uh, heart has been dilated the ventricles have been dilated this area become large as compared to this area so what occurs is that when the impulse has started here for example the impulse has started here by for example here we have the s a node by the time the impulse die here this area due to long pathway due to long pathway because the ventricles have been dilated this portion of the heart has been damaged so the muscles here are weak and they cannot properly contract the tone is lost so the ventricles enlarge so the surface area for the impulse conduction increases which leads to a long pathway for the impulse transmission so long pathway leads to a condition in which the impulse has started here and by the time it ends here this area this portion of the heart it has come out of the refractory period once again so when it is out of the refractory period so this impulse can activate this area once again and when this area is activated by that time this area will be out of the refractory period then this area will be activated then when this is activated then this area will be out of refractory period then this will be activated and this movement goes on and on and on and the impulse moves in the heart round and round and round in the form of circus movement and it leads to ventricular fibrillation which is basically small portions of the heart activated or excited at different times and they being contracting uh, at their own will and without coordination with each other and the heart muscles are like vibrating but not properly contracting and there is no pumping of the blood and there is no cardiac output so ventricular fibrillation is a very very important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion and the conditions which basically lead to ventricular fibrillation after acute coronary occlusion they are basically depletion of the potassium ion in the cells and increase in the extracellular potassium both of these conditions lead to decrease velocity of impulse decrease velocity of impulse lead to formation of circus movement and this the impulse keeps on moving round and round because it is moving so much slow that by the time it reaches its end point some of the portion is out of the refractory period so Uh, the slow velocity leads to ventricular fibrillation then there is injury current formation this injured area basically is negative and it leads to uh, repeated impulses and uh, this basically decreases the refractory period the refractory period becomes decreased and the heart can be excited again very quickly without uh, giving much time finally there is um, sympathetic reflexes and dilation of the ventricle now the sympathetic reflexes also decreases the refractory period the time in which the heart cannot be contracted that time decreases due to release of neurotransmitter uh, from the sympathetic nerves and dilation of the heart basically it prolongs the pathway it increases the pathway through which the impulse will travel so what the impulse have traveled a path by the time it ends here some of the portion of the heart has come out of the refractory period because the pathway is so much long this area has dilated because of weakness so long pathway also leads to ventricular fibrillation that's all about ventricular fibrillation thanks a lot for watching the video